It's 40 years old, it's in black and white, but is The Elephant Man still any good? Let me tell you why it is and why I think this movie is great coming up next. <laughs> The Elephant Man is director David Lynch's second feature film. It garnered a lot of Academy Awards at the time in 1980. And this is a great movie for the test that movies often give us. Can we empathize with characters? Can we empathize with people we could never possibly understand, maybe in real life? And the answer with this movie, I think for a lot of people, is absolutely yes. The movie is about the Victorian England man named John Merrick, who was born with for most of us, as we would say, horrible deformities all over his body. He is a person, he can talk, he can think, and as it turns out in this movie, he's very smart, but he looks hideous to everybody in the movie, and to us, he's a pretty shocking person to look at. John Merrick is wonderfully played by the great actor John Hurt, who you will not recognize here at all. And alongside him is Anthony Hopkins, who plays a sympathetic doctor who comes to see the Elephant Man to rescue him, to put him in the hospital, up in the clock tower where he's got his own room, and then to befriend him in a way. The empathy test of this movie is can we feel what John Merrick felt? Can we experience what he experienced? The immediate answer is no. There's no way most of us, maybe all of us, could understand his position in life because everyone he sees looks at him aghast and is horrified by him, creeped out by him, and so on. But can we feel what he feels? The answer is yes, because he's a human being or was. And the movie tries to make sense of that freak. And it uses the word freak to describe him, but then to show that he is not a freak at all. He's a very interesting man with all kinds of interest in art, theater, obviously, and just good living in general. Down in the description, I give you two reviews. One is from Pauline Kael, great New York critic at the time. The other is from Roger Ebert perhaps my favorite critic. And I think Ebert here goes wrong, and Pauline Kael is right, that this is a very good movie, although conventional, in that it's a monster with a heart movie, in which they did an umpteen number of these since the 1920s. Just think Phantom of the Opera, or King Kong, or Frankenstein. And yet, while being conventional, it's also told in very interesting ways. The black and white is one of the choices here that's very interesting, I think. And it makes the movie have a classic, timeless feel. It maybe it distances us from the subjects in the movie. And practically speaking, it makes the makeup for the Elephant Man more palatable, perhaps. But this is a movie that looks like it could have been made in 2010. I mean, a color would have dated this movie and we could have placed it in a time or an era. As such, it looks more timeless to me for the black and white, so this is a great choice, I think. As well, this movie contains a number of dream sequences, visionary sequences that are Lynchian. You will find in later Lynch movies, such as Blue Velvet, Mulholland Drive, and to attach them or make them a part of a conventional story is really interesting. The movie opens with a dream logic kind of sequence. Maybe it's telling the origin story of the Elephant Man. It's also telling us what it's like to be inside him, to see the world from this sort of expressionistic or formalistic view of the dream logic here. As well, there's a strange ending. Ebert derides it as a star child ending, but more or less it's about beauty and truth beyond that transcends i think the earth and appearances even so you have a bunch of these dreams in this movie and then the sound some very interesting sound effects of machines uh, hammers pounding metal and those go on and on the clock tower also has a very huge machine like sound i actually think the movie is ambivalent about machines now at first it looks like it's not that we're in the Victorian era and the laborers are sweaty and grungy and they must be hated or despised or they're lowly. And yet later on in the movie, Merrick himself is saved by the machine by travel across boat and across train. And then he's up in the clock tower, which is a place of refuge for him as well as a haunting place. But from that clock tower vantage point, he can see across the way a church steeple, which he tries to recreate through his cardboard or paper mache model of it and he's very admiring of that spire so i think the clock tower is a place of refuge but also being inside the machine that's the ambivalent part we aren't sure if we should love these machines which make us less than men or less than human or if these machines are working for us the movie has a very wonderful seg into the elephant man leading us viewers into seeing him as he is 
And if the movie had just shown it to him to us at the very beginning of the movie, I think a lot of people would not have accepted him. So Lynch gradually introduces him to us. First, we see him as a sort of monster that Anthony Hopkins character goes through a bunch of corridors and dark noirish streets to go find the elephant man who is used and abused by a handler, treated as just a freak to make money off of. And there we see a glimpse of him and he looks like a movie monster in a way. The second time we see him, he's got a hood over him. He's brought to the hospital. And there I think a different movie monster, the invisible man comes up, the invisible man or a mummy figure, someone who's got wrappings around them but you can't actually see who they are. The third movie monster then, <laughs> quoted here I think comes up when the Anthony Hopkins character shows him off to the, the scientists and the doctors and we only see the silhouette of John Merrick uh, the doctors see him but we don't and here you've got a kind of a Rorschach test what is this thing where we're seeing this big blot of darkness on a white screen I tend to see this as a movie alien he kind of looks alien like in that silhouette and shadow. So now with these three movie monsters in mind, maybe Frankenstein, Phantom of the Opera, Creature from the Black Lagoon, you know, Invisible Man, Movie Alien, you sort of are introduced to this idea of Merrick as an other, a despised other. But once you go and see him and you hear him quote the 23rd Psalm, talk about Shakespeare, have English tea, you get to see that he's just a normal guy on the inside at least and certainly wants to be and thus that's your monster with a heart movie cast here the acting is great anthony hopkins plays a sympathetic doctor who nevertheless understands he is not much different from merrick's handler the handler who just shows him off for money and understands that merrick is a freak to be sold to the masses here the doctor understands somewhat that he also is doing something similar although a little bit different. And I would say this movie, surprisingly to me, sides with the elite doctors and theater people, actors, people who are noble and uh, let's say morally upright and socially class-wise upright versus the masses, the grubby group of people in the bar, the guy in the hospital who runs the furnace. These people are just really nasty characters. And I think there is some kind of split between the elite, the authorities who, you know, honor John Merrick and want to treat him as human. They are the humanists in this movie versus the masses. In a way, this is an anti-mass movie or an anti-democracy movie, if you want to think of it that way, if you want to look at it from a political point of view or how it's looking at the social classes. And this is a deeply psychological movie where the characters move down corridors. There's so many corridors in this movie long ones, long halls in the hospital, long streets with a dark, narrow ending. I think this is a metaphor for the psychological state of Merrick, perhaps, or maybe all of us, and as well the distance between us and a human being like John Merrick, who perhaps we can't fundamentally know. Nevertheless, this movie does as much work as it possibly can to get us inside the eyes, the ears, the head of John Merrick. Wonderful shot of the camera going up and into the eye slit that he looks out of, but going on the into the inside of Merrick. And then we get a little bit of dream logic in this movie. You see Pauline Kael will praise this shot in particular. And maybe we can see the world via the movie, via the art of film, through the eyes of John Merrick. That's the wish and the dream. Let's just hope we can understand who he was through this movie. What do you think of The Elephant Man? Where does it fit in David Lynch's career? How does this sync up with some of his later work? I'd love to hear what you have to say about all of that. And questions like movies in black and white, why? These are all great, interesting debates. So ha let's have them out in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.